All right, so this is Block 5 of the Young Republic, uh, Lecture 6, Threats to National Unity in this Early American Era. Already, um, kind of in the middle of this uh, time in American history, we see the division of the United States into three sort of separate geographical areas. We have a north, uh, we have south, and we have a west. And um, in such a large, geographically diverse country as the United States, um, there developed certain interests um, that were kind of unique to the north, interests that were unique to the south, and interests that were unique to the west, um, which made threats to national unity a very real issue uh, at the time. Um, so let's take kind of two in their turn, the Essex Junto uh, during the War of 1812 and then the Missouri Compromise um, less than a decade later. We're not going to go into detail here about um, what made the North and South and the West different. I assume that you all know that, you know, the North is manufacturing and commercial base with a large middle class and independent farmers. Uh, and the West is a lot of independent farmers. They depend on, you know, sea transport to get their goods to market. And the South is this totally different class-based society with an elite um, planter elite with a lot of slaves. And we all know the differences between the three sections. Um, at the very beginning, uh, people were concerned that the West might break off and become its own independent country. That in the treason trial of Aaron Burr, um, he was put on trial for trying to detach the Western territories from the United States uh, and to create his own personal empire uh, in the Ohio River and the Mississippi River Valleys. Um, but much more serious than you know Aaron Burr's strange, strange life was uh, the Essex, the Essex Junto. Uh, of 1814, 1815, and this took place during the um, War of 1812, when New Englanders, Federalists, um, had lived under Democrat-Republican rule for 15 years. They had been dragged into a war that they did not support. They had been dragged into a war that they did not uh, believe in against England. Um, and as the war was not going particularly well, they met and discussed um, whether or not they should secede from the Union of States uh, and become their own independent country, which then I imagine would you know, make a peace with England and do all those sorts of things. Um, luckily, um, two things happened. One, um, they never went that far, that more moderate people kind of took control of that meeting and prevented a secession. And number two, the war ended. Um, and it ended on pretty decent terms for the United States, so they were all kind of discredited. But we should see in the fact that there was an Essex Junto um, a sense that national unity is not a guaranteed thing. Uh, that when the interests of a particular class of people or a particular group of people um, are not being met to their satisfaction, that at this point in the American Republic, uh, one of the possible remedies uh, for that situation was simply to leave, to say, look, it's a, uh, this constitution is a compact of states, uh, we don't want to be in the club anymore, and we're out. Uh, and the Essex Junto, although it, you know, collapsed under its own weight pretty quickly along, uh, was evidence uh, of that. But the deeper one uh, was, of course, the issue of slavery. By 1820, slavery is a moral issue for many, many people in the North, and defending it has become a moral issue for many, many people in the South. Uh, the North says that, you know, how can you have lived in a country where, quote unquote, all men are created equal, they are endowed by the creator with certain inalienable rights, but have none of these our life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and then restrict those rights for African slaves. Um, and you start to get these growing abolition movements, abolition newspapers, abolition leaders uh, in the North. Southerners, as we have seen, are very concerned about the protection of their, as they begin to call it, their peculiar institution uh, in the United States government. They see the way to do that is through the Senate. Uh, so this whole issue kind of blows up when Missouri uh, is set to be admitted as uh, the 23rd, 23rd, 23rd state of the Union. You had 11 slave states and 11 free states, and all of a sudden there's Missouri wanting in, um, and now the South says you have to be a slave state in order for us to keep our power. You are. In the Senate, the North says it can't be a slave state. It's above the Ohio River. There's never been slavery there. How can you bring the last thing we want to do as Northerners, like slavery is bad enough where slavery exists right now, but slavery moving into new territories uh, is even worse. Uh, and so for a long time, Missouri was not admitted um, because the issue of slavery was dividing uh, the country in half. 
Um, and eventually you did get the Missouri Compromise, the line of 3630. Everything above it was free except for Missouri. Uh, everything below it was open for slavery. And that 3630 line uh, is going to bring, oh, sorry. Oh, goodness. I hope you're less tired when you're watching this than I am when I'm making it. Um, the line 3630 is going to cause you know huge problems anyway uh, in block seven and eight as we're going to see. Uh, but for now, these differences are papered over by circumstance. These differences are papered over by compromise. Uh, so while there are threats to national unity via sectionalism, the forces that are pulling Americans together, this divided America, is greater. There are some forces spinning American unity apart, uh, but there are also a lot of forces spinning it together. Uh, the West, the North, and the South are all going to try uh, to kind of get the government behind their beliefs uh, through the party system, through alliances with each other. Both the North and the South are going to try to ally with the West um, as time goes on. The North will eventually do it. Uh, that's why we consider it in the Civil War that uh, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, that's all the North, uh, because the West and the North kind of allied together uh, in their interests against the South as the time went on. Uh, so these threats to national unity, Aaron Burr's silly expedition, but more importantly, uh, the Federalists feeling left out, shut out of government up in Connecticut and New England, and most importantly, uh, Northerners, and, and excuse me, Southerners feeling that uh, they were going to be overwhelmed and dominated by a free soil, a northern dominated legislature and uh, presidency, and so they created this Missouri Compromise to try to paper over those differences. And it lasted for, you know, Missouri Compromise lasts for almost a quarter of a century, um, but what replaces it will last for much, much shorter than that.